going on, MMA fans? I'm back to do a collaborative video segment with uh, Osborne McCarty. Um, they are uh, fellow friends uh, here in the MMA YouTube community of mine. Um, I'm going to put a link up over on this side for them. Um, really, really good guys. Very, very humble. I've talked about them before. Um, they do a really great job uh, in the community. And the topic that they gave me that we're going to discuss um, is very, very good. And there's going to be some other guys, I think, doing video responses on this topic as well. So... What I'm going to cover is who can defeat the current uh, UFC title holders from heavyweight division all the way down to the lightweight division. Um, the title holder, what is his biggest vulnerability? What is his biggest weakness? Who can beat him? So let's go ahead and start the heavyweight division. Brock Lesnar, since he is the top of the food chain right now, um, even though Nog is interim heavyweight champion. Um, Lesnar's deficiency is his, is his grappling. I'm not talking about wrestling. I'm talking about his pure jiu-jitsu and his grappling. We saw the deficiency in the Frank Mir fight. He can get caught. Um, a guy like Noguera, a guy like Mir, that's a guy that can give him a run for his money. A really, really good submission expert. Um, a guy with you know high-level jiu-jitsu. Both guys have black belts in Brazilian jiu-jitsu, and both guys are very, very well decorated in grappling. So those two guys, whoever wins in that interim title fight coming up here at UFC 92, Nog or Mir, can give Lesnar a really, really, really uh, tough time. Uh, light heavyweight, we have Forrest Griffin. Now, Forrest, of course, will be fighting Rashad Evans at UFC 92. I personally, I don't think that's the best matchup in the world for um, uh, for Rashad. I think that Griffin has very, very good game plans. Um, he's, of course, learned that from, from the best uh, with going through Extreme Couture. But I think the guy that beats that beats Forrest Griffin and, and can push the pace on Forrest Griffin is a guy that pushes the pace. Um, I know it's kind of redundant, but um, a guy that's going to move forward on Forrest, put him into trouble. Um, we kind of saw that with the Keith Jardine fight, that you know Jardine came forward on Forrest, kind of overwhelmed him a little bit. I think that's what you got to do. I think you got to put pressure on him. I think that's the key thing. The other key thing is to be able to control him in the clinch and control him on the ground. I think... If Rampage, and I'm going to talk about Rampage, because I think that's the guy that, even in the first fight, I think the second time around, if he came in with the right mindset, he came in with the right game plan, be strong in the clinch, take the fight to the ground, control Forrest on the ground, don't give him an inch. I think Rampage is a very, very uh, a good test uh, for Forrest. Um, another guy that's a tough matchup for Forrest, for sure, is Lyoto Machida. Machida is a tough test for anybody, but... We probably won't see Machida get a title shot for a very long time. So, um, there's other guys in this division. Um, I just covered really one. I know everyone's going to have different opinions on you know, really who matches up well with Forrest, but that was my take on it. So, um, at middleweight, we have Anderson Silva. Um, I think Anderson Silva's deficiency is really someone that can get on top of him. Um, his top game, or not his top game, his bottom game. Um, guys that have been able to mount him, Travis Luter, um, uh, you know, it showed that he can be controlled. Uh, Dan Henderson did it for a little while. Um, you know, I, I really look at a guy, and this this is really really um, contingent on if the guy comes in, looks impressive, um, and really gets back to who he was, and, and that's Dennis Kang. I think Dennis Kang now coming to the UFC is definitely a threat to Anderson Silva if Dennis Kang gets back to where he was. He's got one of the most dis devastating top games in all of MMA. Great grappling skills. Um, another guy that could give um, Anderson Silva trouble um, from the top or you know, putting Anderson Silva on his back, uh, Paul Harris, Demi Maia, somebody like that. So, um, Let's see. Uh, at welterweight, we've got George St. Pierre. Um... Really, GSP's weakness all around, because he's really become a well-rounded fighter. His, his jiu-jitsu is so much better. His grappling is so much better. Um, he's, of course, a world-class uh, takedown artist. He's got great takedown defense. He's an underrated wrestler. Um, I think is to stand with him. I think the guy that really is going to give him trouble in his next fight is BJ Penn. Um, how long is BJ going to be able to keep that fight standing? We're going to see. We're going to find out in that fight because personally, I think that's going to be tough. Um, you know, even in the, their first fight, you saw that BJ was able to get taken down. Um, I think BJ's going to have a tough time keeping it on the feet in that fight. But you know, 
the guy that can keep the fight standing and can strike with St. Pierre, we saw Sarah do it. I still think that GSP is a little bit weary on his feet. I think that that is the guy, that is the person, uh, as far as his deficiency, um, that can beat him, I think, in the stand-up game. I think a guy like BJ Penn, I think a guy like Tiago Alves are guys that are going to give him trouble. Um, so that's my take on uh, George St. Pierre and um, his weakness and who could beat him in that division. Now, at lightweight, the king of the mountain, of course, is BJ Penn. Um, his real deficiency ha has been in the past is his cardio. He, of course, he has great takedown defense. Um, he has good stand-up. He has great, great grappling skills. Many people thought Sean Shirt could push him to the end um, as far as his cardio. We saw that you know BJ lasted through that. It looked like he was in good shape. Um, really, there's not very many guys in that division that give BJ a solid matchup. Kenny Florian, though, does pose some problems, some minor problems, if uh, you know he can get it to the ground. Um, I think that Kenny can grapple with BJ, but then again, I think both guys a little bit cancel each other out. I think BJ all around might be the better pure grappler, but you know when you have two guys with that high level of jiu-jitsu, you kind of toss it out the window to see who's going to have the higher level of uh, jits. But um, I think Kenny can give him problems standing up. I think Kenny can give him problems um, all around in some areas, but I think there's not very many guys in that division. Um, Sean Shirk was one guy that I looked at that could give him problems, but of course, you know, Sean Shirk has now been dispelled um, by BJ Penn getting uh, the TKO victory. But um, those were the, um, the current UFC title holders, um, the vulnerabilities. Um, their weaknesses, who could beat them, who you know could best beat them. Um, if you feel like you want to do a video response, um, I'll just mention this out to anybody, um, even the fellow guys here in the MMA YouTube community that do videos, feel free to do a video response on this or who you think um, could actually beat these guys or what their vulnerabilities are. Of course, the uh, watcher, the subscriber, you know, leave your comments of what you think. Um, not everyone's going to agree on this. Everyone's got differing opinions, which that's the beauty of this sport. That's the beauty of MMA. Um, real quick, once again, I want to thank Osborne McCarty for um, coming up with this topic. And, you know, we've back and forth, these guys have talked to me, nothing but great things to say about them. They're definitely a great asset here in the MMA YouTube community. Thanks for the topic, guys. Um, and on that note, you guys, have a great day.